Lesson 3.7, Word Problems Solving, Multiply Two-Digit Numbers. This is the last lesson for Chapter 3. If you've missed all the previous lessons, you might become confused or lost with the methods we use. You can find the lessons linked in the description. We can use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve multi-step multiplication problems. We can draw a bar model that fits the operation we need to use to compare two numbers to each other. We can then use the bar model to write an equation to find how many more one amount is than the other. Remember the steps to solve word problems. The first thing we do is read the problem. We need to understand what we need to find, what it's asking of us. And what information do we need to use? We need to identify the important facts. And how will we use the information? We can draw a diagram or bar model. We can choose an operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Then we solve the problem. We write an equation and solve it. And we can check our answer to make sure we did our math correctly. In March, Mr. Lee sold an average of 41 apples each day for 31 days. In February, he sold an average of 51 apples each day for 28 days. And based on this data, how, man, how many more apples were sold in February than March? So what do we need to find? We need to find the difference in apple sales for March and February. We can underline or identify the important information. You may not be able to underline word problems in your school books, but you could identify them and write them in on some scratch paper. We know March is equal to 41 times 31 days and February is equal to 51 times 28 days. We can multiply 41 times 31 and 51 times 28, then find their difference. We know in March he sold 41 apples for 31 days. We multiply 41 times 31. We can do 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 4 tens is 4 tens. We can also look at this as 1 times a 41, and just write a 41 there. We know this is always going to be a 0. We have 3 tens times 1, which is 3 tens. We write it here. Then we have 3 tens times 4 tens, which is 12 tens. We write it here. We add our partial products and get 1,271 apples for March. Now we can multiply 51 times 28 for February. We have an 8 times 1, which is an 8. 8 times 5 tens, which is 40 tens. And we write it here. That's 408. Now we do 2 tens times 1, which is 2 tens. We write the 2 tens here. Then we have 2 tens times 5 tens, which is 10 tens. We write it here. We add our partial products and get 1,428. And we can draw a bar model to help us imagine the problem. We know he sold 1,428 in February and 1,271 in March. We need to find the difference, so we're going to subtract. And we subtract 1,428 minus 1,271, and we find that there were 157 more apples sold in February. And we can check our answer. We know March was 41 times 31. We can estimate that as a 40 times 30, which is 1,200. And that's reasonable. For an answer, it's close to our estimate. In February was 51 times 28. We can estimate that to 50 times 30, which is 1,500. And that's reasonable. It's close to what we got. We can also estimate our subtraction. 1,428 is about 1,400. And 1,271 is about 1,300. When we do the subtraction, we get 100, which is reasonable. In March, Mr. Lee sold 27 pears. He also sold 20 times more oranges than pears. If he sold 625 tomatoes, how many more tomatoes did he sell than oranges? Now, if it sounded confusing, we can read it again and break it down. We know he sold 27 pears. 
but he sold 20 times more oranges than pears. So we need to find the amount of oranges. We would just multiply these two together. We see he sold 625 tomatoes. So what do we need to find? How many oranges he sold by doing this multiplication. Then we need to find the difference in sales of tomatoes and oranges. We identify the important information. It's important to know that the oranges are equal to 27 times 20 and that the tomatoes are 625. And we can multiply 27 times 20 to find the amount of oranges, then find the difference of oranges from 625 tomatoes. For oranges, we multiply 27 times 20. We start here in the ones place, and we have a 0 times 7, which is 0, and a 0 times 2, which is a 0. We can also look at it as 0 times 27, so both place values will be a 0. We know that's always going to be a zero, isn't it? Now we have two tens times seven, which is 14 tens. We regroup the one and write the four down. Now we have two tens times two tens, which is four tens, plus one more ten is five tens. And we write it here. We have 540 oranges. And we can draw a bar model to help us imagine the problem. We know he has 625 tomatoes that sold. Now we know he sold 540 oranges, and we need to find this difference. We do our subtraction and find there were 85 more tomatoes sold than oranges. This roll of paper towels has 60 sheets. If there are 15 rolls in a package, and we bought four packages, how many sheets did we buy? So we're going to need to multiply twice to solve this problem. We're going to multiply 60 sheets times 15 rolls to find how many sheets are in this big package. Then we need to multiply that times 4 to know how many sheets are in 4 packages. And we can also multiply the 15 rolls times 4 packages and then multiply that by 60 sheets because the associative property states that we can group and multiply factors differently. We'll get the same product. If we do this way, 60 times 15, we have a 0 times 5, which is 0, and a 0 times 1, which is 0. Then we have, this is always a 0, isn't it? Then we have 6 tens times 5, which is 30 tens. We regroup 3 up here, and we put the 0 here. Then we do 6 tens times 1 ten, which is 6 tens, and we add the 3, that's 9 tens. We have 900 sheets in a package. Now that we know how many are in a package, we bought 4 packages, we need to multiply this times 4. And we can see the basic fact of 4 times 9 is 36. We have 2 zeros in the factor, so there's 2 zeros in the product. That's 3,600 sheets. We could have also done it this way and started with 15 times 4. We would have had 60. Then we could have multiplied the 60 rolls times the 60 sheets. And we can do this using mental math. We see the basic facts of 6 times 6, which is 36. We have two zeros in the factors, so we have two zeros in the product. We can even check our answer by using a different order. One dozen is equal to 12. In October, Mr. Lee sold 34 dozen apples. In November, he sold seven dozen less. How many apples did Mr. Lee sell in October and November? So we need to find October. There's 12 in a dozen and he sold 34 dozen. So we're gonna do 34 times 12. We have a 2 times 4 is 8, and a 2 times 3 is 6. We can also look at this as 2 times 34, and just double the 10s and 1s digits to a 68. We know that's always a 0. We have 1 10 times 4, which is 4 10s. We have 1 10 times 3 10s, which is 3 10s. And we add our partial products and get 408 apples for October. Now for November, all we know is it's seven dozen less than this 34 dozen, so we need to subtract first. We do 
34 minus 7 and get 27 dozen for November. Now we can find how many apples are here by multiplying it times 12 because there's 12 in each dozen. We have 2 times 7, which is 14. We regroup the 1 and put the 4 down. We have 2 times 2 tens, which is 4 tens, plus 1 more 10 is 5 tens. And now that we've finished using that regrouped number, we erase it or cross it out so it doesn't confuse us when we go to multiply the tens. Now we have 1 ten times 7, which is 7 tens. Then we have 10 times 20, which is 200. We write the 2 here. We add our partial products and get 324 apples for November. Using a bar model, we need to know how many apples he sold in October and November. So we have 408 and 324. That will be our total of apples sold. So we need to add them. And we add the two products together. And we find that he sold 732 apples in October and November. Each classroom in Emma's school has six rows of desks with four in each row. If one new desk costs $98, how much will it cost to buy new desks for Emma's class? So we need to multiply twice to solve this problem. We need to find how many desks are in a classroom. There's six rows with four in each row. We can multiply six times four. Then we can multiply that product times the $98 per desk. We can also multiply four times $98, then multiply it times six, because the associative property states that we can group and multiply factors differently and get the same product. If we do six times four, that's 24 desks. They're $98 each, so we need to multiply $98 times the 24 desks. We start with the ones place to multiply with regrouping and do four times eight, which is 32. We regroup the three and write the two. Now we need to do four times nine tens, which is 36 tens plus three more is 39 tens, and we write it here. Now that we're finished adding our regrouped number, we cross it off or erase it so we don't confuse ourselves when we multiply the tens place. We know this spot is always a zero. We're going to multiply two tens times eight, which is 16 tens. We regroup the one and put the six down. Now we need to multiply two tens times nine tens, which is 18 tens plus that one more 10 is 19 tens. Now we just add our partial products and we see that it's going to cost the school $2,352 for new desks for Emma's classroom. We had some clue words in our word problems. We had subtraction clue words of how many more than and seven dozen less. We had addition clue words of how many in October and November. And we had multiplication clue words of 20 times more, 41 each day for 31 days, 60 sheets in 15 rolls, and 34 dozen. Because we had to multiply it times 12, which is a dozen, to know how many. So when you're solving word problems, look for clue words that'll help you choose the operation and draw a diagram, maybe draw a bar model to help you imagine the problem. We're going to move on to chapter four, which is about division, and I hope I'll see you there. Keep trying, keep moving forward. Bye.